Hi guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World on YouTube Medium and uh, DanielRosal.tech. So for today's video, um, I want to just quickly, this is not a uh, five minute long plug for my book on Amazon, The Confused Freelancer's Guide to Technology, but I have it up here because it is one of the topics I cover and this is something that I uh, see a lot where, whereby people will buy their domain, which is always uh, good to buy your own domain name and not to be using something like a you know branded subdomain on like wix.com or one of these other all you can uh, I, I keep calling them all you can eat uh, click and point DIY website builders that anyone who has uh, bought this book and I haven't started marketing it yet so it's uh, just fresh on the market but anybody who reads this uh, will know very quickly that I'm not much of a fan of these all-in-one editors because if you want to get to the, if if you want to build something with scale now some people say do stuff that doesn't scale but if you do want to take the opposite approach and do things that have a chance of scaling you're much better off separating out your provider between your hosting company your domain name company and actually understanding what's going into making your website tick on the internet including the dns records all of these things if you're going to be moving around to uh, different infrastructure providers are going to matter someday. They may not matter now, but uh, when you get to your world domination stage, they will. Okay, so basically, if you've gone ahead and uh, let's just do a real example here, it'll be easier to explain like this. I'm going to go back into this demo account that I use in all my videos and uh, let me just sign in quickly. Okay, so I've just signed into my demonstration Gmail and uh, there's really not much in here uh, just used for these videos um, so what I am gonna do is uh, show you where you can add more email addresses so if you click on the accounts and imports uh, that's the fourth tab across to the right at the time of writing now if you haven't set up any additional sending accounts then you're just gonna have the Gmail address itself as sent as now the Gmail UI has a habit of changing quite frequently you used to be able to set up your signatures here now signatures are taken care of uh, somewhere in the uh, signature so you'd want to generally do that as well and uh, let's firstly add the second our new email address so I have just in the last week set up again for these videos this de this domain called danielrosal.tech so what I'm going to go ahead and do is log into my cPanel and I'm going to create an email at danielrosal.tech and then I'm going to add that as a setting address in Gmail. Okay, so I've gone ahead and loaded up my cPanel for this uh, domain name. And uh, if you scroll down a little, I scrolled down a bit from the top, uh, your cPanel might look a bit different. It varies a lot between hosts. Uh, this is actually part of a reseller hosting account. So there's actually quite a lot. If you have a, like a little cheap shared hosting thing, uh, they may restrict this, but this is a quite decent array of cPanel options but irrespective of whether you have a lot or a little you should have uh, the few things that I'm going to show in order to make this system work for you so it's they're all email related one is email accounts the second is forwarders um, the third is default address now you might see this described as catch-all and the next thing is some kind of spam filtering. It depends what spam filter your web host uses, but this one's called spam experts. And I explain in the book why you want to basically take off a spam filtering at the host level. And that's because Gmail has its own spam filter. <coughs> As you know, if you just jump back to our inbox for a second, we have the spam inbox here and Gmail will process whatever you send its way and uh, apply spam filtering so it doesn't you might you might think it makes more sense to do spam filtering twice um, it actually doesn't because you're just going to increase the risk of um, of legitimate email being caught in one or the other spam filter and additionally in Gmail there is this nice nice feature uh, if I can for example use my own website here uh, the email I sent you have this option that if I want to send an email to myself, let's say what I'm putting in a wildcard here. Wildcard stands for any email address at dsrghostwriting.com. And I can create a filter that never send it to spam. So uh, basically the Gmail spam filter or the G Suite spam filter, if you're using your own domain on G Suite, uh, is very good. And uh, it is uh, disadvantageous uh, to use spam filtering uh, at both levels. So what, I'm gonna, what I do do is uh, go into spam experts which is the one that my 
host uh, has got running over here and uh, you will want to basically disable now you can also if I go back up um, you can also just search for spam and you can see spam filters um, there might even be a couple of overlapping systems sometimes uh, so I'm just gonna go to spam filters here and I've already actually disabled you can see here process now when I got the account it looked like this so I basically disabled process new emails and marked them as spam so that means that there's no spam filtering uh, happening at my C panel. It's just going to pass stuff on. So let's go and set up um, an email just to associate with this Gmail over here. So the first thing I'm going to do is uh, jump up to email accounts. And uh, I'm going to go ahead. You can see I've already set up demos and Daniel and Rosal Tech. I'm just going to create a new one from scratch over here. And I'm going to click on the create button to do that. This is a screen and uh, I'm just going to call it um, gmail underscore demo because I'm going to be showing how to attach that to gmail and uh, I'm going to give myself a password as well. Now you can see that the uh, storage space here is set to just a little bit over a gigabyte, 1024 megs. Um, now you, this is one way of setting it up, there is another way that I discussed uh, in the book and that's just creating a forward rule. Um, if you do it this way it's going to mean that you're going to have an inbox on cPanel. To be honest uh, if you have storage space in your cPanel um, because emails are relatively light um, I would put this to unlimited and just create the inbox uh, in your cPanel. That means that it, but that does mean that it's going to be existing. The emails are going to uh, live on the web server and they're going to be forwarded to your Gmail. So that's one way to set it up. So I'm going to go ahead and create this. And then when we're creating the forward, I'll explain your second option. So I've just gone ahead and I have created a Gmail underscore demo. And uh, this in my cPanel, if you look at the connected devices, this will give you the uh, server information for the outbound server, which is the SMTP server, and for the inbound server, which these days is IMAP. If you're still, you don't use POP, if it, even if it's an option, it's uh, antiquated and unencrypted. So I'm just going to click on connect devices and uh, I'll just show you what cPanel tells me. This is a screen we get to and uh, as you can see in my um, cPanel I have two options. One is for it, one says secure SL, SSL TLS settings and the other one is not secure. Um, and you can see, remember I mentioned uh, the antiquated uh, POP3 uh, that still exists and it's got port 995 here for the inbound. Uh, so basically, you're lo you you want to use these basically secure SSL TLS. Uh, as to which it doesn't usually matter, except that there's different ports. The ports uh, for the outbound are typically port four six five is for S SSL authentication over SSL, and port five eight seven is typically for the one used for authentication over the TLS protocol. But basically, let's just stick for stick to SSL and four six five. And uh, the important information here is the outgoing server uh, is this one, mail.danielrosal.tech. And username is the address itself. Password is a password we configured. Now, you have a nice little option here just to point this out of uh, you can actually send yourself the setup instructions. So this is nice if you're uh, working with a couple of less technically savvy colleagues, like let's say, and you want to... Uh, you know, uh, help them set up their their account. So you can just put in there after setting up their accounts, pop in their Gmail address and send them out some setup instructions. So I've just done that, and the email is going to come through. So now let's go ahead and uh, so we've created an email for for ourselves that's going to allow us to send through our Gmail. And let's we need, we also need to make sure that the email loops back to Gmail, and that's going to be setting up a uh, forward. So let's go ahead and do that now. So I've just jumped back to my cPanel home and you can see where forward is. It's the next option over. So I'm just going to go and click on that. This is the main screen you'll get to when you're setting up forwards. Now remember remember what I said before that you can create an inbox on the server. That's going to be living on your hosting and using up space on your hosting. So if you have a certain um, storage allocation that's going to count against that. So what you can do instead, I did set up the account so it's going to be a real uh, outbound account um, but if you're only receiving mail now in order to send through Gmail you do need the real account if you only want to receive mail to your branded domain 
um, uh, put that onto your Gmail, you can just go ahead and set it before it. But if you're going to be sending and receiving, you need both. So uh, let me now go ahead and uh, create this forward. So I just clicked on add forwarder and uh, uh, Gmail underscore demo is what we want to forward, address to forward, um, at and then the domain and then we're forwarding this to Daniel Rosell demo at gmail.com um, there are advanced options that let you do some more interesting things but that's basically what you need to do and click add forward and we get a confirmation message saying all emails sent to gmail at will now be copied to Daniel Rosell demo why this matters is that when you are setting up the gmail address gmail will send a verification code you want that verification code to loop back so that you can uh, get pick it up right there in your Gmail and uh, allow the authentication to take place. And uh, just remember that we also def disable the spam protection just in case uh, that got caught up in spam on the cPanel site. So I'm back in my Gmail here and now I wa what I want to do is click on settings, see all settings and uh, jump across to uh, the accounts. Uh, accounts and import setting we were at before. Send mail as you have this. We have this option under your uh, default address called Add Another Email Address. We're going to be clicking on it. Pretty self-explanatory from this point forward. So we just we're going to put in Gmail underscore demo at uh, Daniel Rosil dot tech. Now this treat is an alias button. Uh, you can learn more um, here about what this does. It's by default turn on. Gmail's documentation will explain uh, when you want to tick it and when you don't want to tick it. Basically, for most use cases, uh, treating as an alias is is the option that's going to be useful. So I'm going to I'm going to leave that turned on. So then I'm just going to click on the next step option. Now you do have the option to specify a different reply to address. That's not recommended. Um, we could put in the Gmail address, but you know, for the sake of it, um, the reply to is another kind of meta field header field in the email, and uh, by default that's set to the sending address. You can have a different reply to and uh, just make sure that it goes to somewhere else. It's not, There aren't that many cases in which it's useful to do that so um, you don't need to specify that address. You can just proceed to the next step here. Now you can see SMT, SMTP server has been automatically populated and what you might notice here is that it is different uh, than the server address that cPanel told us to. Now this is happening because I'm using Cloudflare on this domain. Cloudflare, which I've talked about a few times, is this really amazing service that sits between your website, your web hosting, and the internet, and creates proxies. So what you're looking at here is the is actually the proxy SMTP server. It's not the SMTP server. It's the proxy that Cloudflare has generated so that people that are doing stuff like scanning your network maliciously, and that's pretty easy to do. You can just, um, hackers, people that are trying to break into your domain, can literally just uh, see all the infrastructure that you've set up including your SMTP server and your web server and everything you have on the internet. So Cloudflare has a few, it's not just for proxying but one of the things it does is it proxies servers. So uh, this automatically detects and uh, you can, if this has happened, you can go ahead and use this. Um, you may be unable to uh, use the actual mail server. If that does happen, then what you need to do is go into Cloudflare and you need to actually turn off the uh, proxying for the MX records. Now, getting a bit complicated here, the MX records are what tells the um, server where to go to for mail, so you can just disable the proxy in Cloudflare for that. I just wanted to quickly show what that looks like. So this is your Cloudflare and this is your you will see MX your mail records here. If it's uh, if it's orange, that means the Cloudflare proxy is running. You click that, it'll go back to gray. And if you do that, the mail servers, the MX records will no longer be proxied and uh, you will not run into this thing when you're trying to set up sending through Gmail. So I've just gone ahead and added my username and password into uh, the appropriate fields. It's automatically detected, as I said, the Cloudflare, and it's detected the port 587. So I'm just going to go ahead and click on Add Account for that. Okay, so after going through this process, I you will get add another email address you own, um, and it'll send an email with a confirmation code was sent to the address. Now remember that we created a forward. So the beauty of this system is 
that the code should loop back. So I'm just going to move this over. Now you could, of course, go into the webmail of your cPanel email and uh, use the code that way. But uh, this is easier. You may as well, if you set it up, take advantage. All right, so we did have about a um, 20 to 30 second time delay over there. But it did, uh, it did make its way to us in the end. So this is the email you get from Gmail. Um, it's got a link, or you can just do the code. So let's just do the code because we have the window open. Pop that in, and then click on the Verify button. So that's been successfully verified, and uh, you can now see that if you go into All Settings, uh, Accounts and Import, and you have your uh, branded email address connecting over SSL on port 465. So you can go ahead and make that default, and that means that you'll basically your default sending email um, is going to be that. So this is where the signature comes in. I would go ahead and uh, I would just uh, create a new signature for yourself. Whoops. All right, so just gone ahead and made myself a very basic signature. I just dropped in a little tux uh, guy and that line of text. Now I'm gonna just uh, save my signature and uh, just make sure that that's associated. And they've changed this recently in Gmail that when I send um, email address, the danielrosal.tech for new email and on reply forward, it's now a bit more granular. So I'm just gonna say for both new emails and for that reply I'm going to use my Daniel Rosal text signature I also typically do this and search the signature before the quoted text and again save my changes so now if we click on compose in Gmail uh, the tux guy is broken let's not worry about that um, I'm sending from Gmail demo at danielrosal.tech as opposed to my Gmail address and I can send to anyone in the world um, I always wonder who operates testatest.com because they've probably received quite a few emails from me over the years. Um, and this message that we're sending now is actually sending through uh, the cPanel, uh, or the, in other words, the email that our host manages. Um, it's sending through that. Uh, if we go send this test message to testatest.com, and we can go into our webmail interface on the uh, hosting email, and we can find our message should be there as well. If you're not sure that your email address is working to receive email, we know it is because we just received the verification code. And you can go ahead and want to use use one of these online email diagnostic utilities, uh, but it shouldn't really be necessary. It's pretty straightforward to set up. And now we can use our um, we can use our branded email address, our cPanel, without ever having to go near our hosting dashboard, our cPanel, and just use everything from the convenience of Gmail. Um, you, this will inherit, so if you're using your Gmail from the app on your smartphone, uh, you will pick up the sending address and you don't need to worry about the receiving site because that's already configured on the host, on the cPanel, and it'll all come back to you. So you can really use Gmail from wherever you typically use Gmail, whether that's your laptop, your desktop, or your, sm or your smartphone. Thanks for watching the video. If you have enjoyed, then uh, please, or you just want to get in touch, you can reach out to me at danielrosal.co.il.